friends, it's Sam from DIY Huntress and I hope everyone is doing awesome. Today I'm going to walk you through some simple updates that I made to the bathroom in our rental apartment that can easily be removed or taken with us when we move out. Seriously, best part about this is nothing is actually permanent, so we're going to get our security deposit back when we move out because I'm going to put everything that used to be in here back on in. But for now, I'm super stoked to have a bathroom that we are actually excited about. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I do. Let's get started. We've now been in our apartment for about six months and while the majority of the apartment is looking really awesome, the bathroom is another story. Don't get me wrong, there's really nothing wrong with this bathroom per se. It's pretty updated, but it just isn't our style. It doesn't feel like it fits in with the rest of the apartment. But since we're renting, we're pretty limited on what we can do in this space, so I decided to focus my energy on making some renter-friendly upgrades to our bathroom that can be reversed when we move out so we can still get our deposit back. So semi funny story, I actually took this footage you're seeing here six months ago when we moved into the apartment on the off chance that I might have wanted to make some updates to this bathroom down the line and I'm actually really happy that I did. And as you can see, one of the first things I did when we moved into this space was replace the toilet seat. This is something I do every time we move into a new space. I just have this thing about needing a clean toilet seat when we move into a new apartment. I also really wanted to install a soft closed toilet seat as well. So I unscrewed the old toilet seat and then installed the new one. And it was pretty simple. It only took me about 10 minutes to do this. So one other easy upgrade I made when we moved in was replacing the shower curtain. The old tenants were awesome and left us their shower curtain and I really didn't want to keep it. So I got rid of it and I replaced it with one that I really liked that matched like the mud cloth vibe that we had going on in our living room and also our bedroom. Spoiler alert, I am replacing the shower curtain rod later in the video, but that was a super easy fix as well. fast forward to like two weeks from right now, I decided that it was time to revisit this bathroom and to start making a couple of changes so I could start making this bathroom feel like ours. And one of the things I really wanted to do was to brighten up the grout in the shower on this white subway tile. And since we are renting, we can't really just redo the tile or redo the grout. So I picked up some grout cleaner from Home Depot, added it to a spray bottle, and then just followed all the directions for applying it to the grout in order to deep clean it. Honestly, I was super skeptical about this product, but it actually worked really, really well. And as always, I have linked this product along with everything else I'm talking about and showing you guys in this video on my website. And you can find that link in the video description. But in terms of application, I sprayed it onto the grout and then scrubbed it in using my Dremel Versa that I got as part of Home Depot's Prospective program. You could use a regular scrubbing brush for this, but using the Versa made this so, so quick and easy. And honestly, I was pretty grateful for the splash guard that comes with this thing at this point because this grout cleaner is pretty volatile. It smells super strong and you don't wanna get it on your skin. So having a splash guard definitely helped prevent me from making a solid mess with this stuff. But honestly, it did work really well while applying it the right way. So I then decided to move on to the grout in the floor as well. And I was able to brighten the entire floor of the bathroom just by cleaning the grout. So while the grout was looking pretty awesome, another easy fix I really wanted to make was re the seam between the bathtub and the wall. And this was actually filled with grout in our rental that was already cracking and falling apart. So I just used a grout scraping tool as well as a razor and also a detail brush with my Dremel to just get rid of all of that cracking, nasty, gross grout. And even though this is in fast forward mode, I definitely took my time here because I didn't want to damage the tub or any of the surrounding tile. But basically once I had gotten rid of all of that grout, I then vacuumed out all of the seams to make sure that everything was nice and clean. I don't know what is blocking my camera here. Sorry about that. Um, but all I'm doing is just scrubbing to make sure that all of the debris is not in the wall still. Once all of those gaps were dry and clean, it was then time to start prepping for the caulking. And I started by taping off an area where I wanted the caulking to go. And I found that this is definitely the neatest way to do this, especially if you don't have like a really steady hand. I actually covered this process once before on my blog, way before I had a YouTube channel. So if you're interested in checking out a step-by-step -step for this process, you can find the link for that below this video in the video description. I spent more time in a bathtub today than I probably have in my entire life. 
Okay, so after being a drama queen, it was time to really start this process and I always fill my bathtub before caulking and this just adds weight to the bathtub so that nothing cracks or moves out of place later. Again, I cover this more in that blog post, so check that out if you're interested. Long story short, once the bathtub is filled, I then added my caulking into that seam in between the tape and then spread it out using my finger. I then removed the tape pretty quickly because you don't want the tape to cure with that caulking. And then I smoothed out any in perfections or inconsistencies with my finger and that was it. It's actually pretty amazing what a little grout cleaner and a fresh bead of caulking can do to your bathroom. Now this wouldn't be a DIY Huntress project if it didn't include some woodworking. So at this point I moved on to this tiny little nook in our bathroom that's just serving no purpose and decided to make some shelves. Let's make some shelves. Now, quick disclaimer, my original thought was, okay, there's this nook here, there's some empty space, I really wanna put some storage, let's do some floating shelves with hidden brackets. But okay, that didn't work, but I'm gonna walk you through how I made those anyway in case you want to make floating shelves for your space. And basically, I started with some 2x12s that I got at the hardware store. Now, I'm well aware that I'm doing a renter-friendly video and not everybody has access to a miter saw, so you can definitely ask the people at the hardware store to cut these pieces down for you if you don't have access to a saw. I actually had them cut these for me at first, and then I trimmed them down to their final size in my own shop. And like I just mentioned, originally the idea was I really wanted to do some hidden hardware. That didn't end up working out, I'll explain why later. But it was actually a pretty simple process in case anyone's interested. I ended up getting some metal brackets and those brackets had half inch wide rods that came out of them. So I started by marking where I wanted these brackets to sit and then I ended up drilling half inch wide holes into the 2 by 12 piece. Now I did invest in this super long drill bit for this because I did get some longer brackets and again I've linked those in the blog post if you're interested in checking them out. But basically in order to make sure that they were super straight I did use a doweling jig and I just drilled directly into that 2 by 12. Basically to make sure that I did not drill too far into the wood, I used painter's tape to mark the depth of how deep I needed that hole to be. And then once I drilled those holes, I ran a dry fit to make sure that there were no surprises later and luckily everything fit perfectly. Now at the time when I thought that this floating shelf idea would work, I just wanted to make this as easy as possible. So I did make sure to go in with my Dremel and just sand out any of the leftover wood. I wanted to make sure that these shelves would just basically slide on and off of those brackets pretty easily. And once I was happy with the movement, I then sanded all of the shelves down and stained them using a walnut stain color to match the vanity that we already have in our bathroom. I also made sure to seal all of these shelves with a polyurethane because they are gonna be exposed to some moisture and I wanted to give them as much protection as possible. And once they were dry, it was then time to install. I swear, I always lose my pen. You can never have too many pens or measuring tape. At this point, I decided those brackets were not gonna work for this project. This space was way too tight and I did not wanna take the trim off the door in order to install the shelves. So I ended up opting for the same brackets I used in the Murphy bed builds and they honestly worked beautifully. Once I was done installing those shelves, I was pretty sold on the idea of switching out all of the rest of the fixtures in the bathroom with something that was a matte black color. And the reason I chose this is because it already matches the hardware that's on the vanity that's in our bathroom. Now, as a renter, I obviously don't wanna make any extra extra holes in the tile if I don't need to. And this towel rack was a really weird size, so I decided to go for something a little smaller. This obviously meant that there were some extra holes left over in that tile. So in order to fix this, I did remove the drywall anchors by inserting a screw about a quarter of the way into the anchor and then pulling it out with a pair of pliers. And once those holes were then empty, I filled them using the same white caulking that I used on the bathtub. Another super easy fix was to replace the toilet paper holder. And I did this the same way I replaced the towel rack where I just removed it from the surface that it was on, unscrewed the old hardware, screwed in the new hardware and replaced it using something that was matte black to match the rest of the finishes. I also actually filled in those extra holes using wood putty later that was tinted to match the same color as the vanity. After replacing the fixtures, it was time to move on to the lighting and I started by shutting off all of the electricity to the bathroom. 
Honestly, we have this like awful boob light in our bathroom and I really just needed it to go. So I started by removing that light from the ceiling and then replaced that using a really cute pendant that I picked up at Home Depot. Okay, something I totally forgot to mention earlier in this project is if you are replacing any fixtures in your apartment, you most likely will want to put them in a box and store them away somewhere. The reason that I'm doing this is because when we move out, I do want to put the old fixtures back so that our landlord will give us our deposit back. And I also want to keep these nice fixtures for our future home. Okay, but back to this project. So basically I just replaced this boob light using this really cute fixture from Home Depot and it came with directions that has some color coded wires that matched up with the colors of the wires that were in the ceiling. But if you're not comfortable replacing something like this on your own, definitely ask for help. This is something that becomes easier with practice and honestly, switching out light fixtures makes a huge impact in whatever space you're in. So this was a fun little upgrade to do to this bathroom. As you can see though, when these lights were installed, they were clearly painted around instead of having the wall or the ceiling painted first. I would have loved to have painted the wall or the ceiling before installing these fixtures, but that wasn't really an option in terms of timing because I did a lot of this after my full-time job each day. So I decided to install the fixtures first and then I painted around them later. Okay, so in keeping it real with you guys, I originally wanted to replace this medicine cabinet, but as I was replacing the light fixture, I realized that the landlord actually permanently affixed the medicine cabinet to the wall, which meant not happening. So instead, I actually removed the front of this mirror and found a mirror that was the same size to replace it with that was a lot more modern, and it seriously made such a great impact in the space. Oh, so much better. I honestly had these lofty ambitions to create a medicine cabinet with this really awesome wood frame, but sometimes you just have to compromise with whatever it is that you have to work with. And this was one of those moments and it worked out just fine. But okay, moving past that. So once I was done replacing that mirror, it was time to then do some touch-up paint around those fixtures that I put in. And I used my Dremel with a scrubbing pad to just kind of scrub away some of that raised paint that was around the existing fixture. And then once that was nice and flat, I just used some matching paint to paint around the fixture and also to paint around the ceiling. And I did two coats each. And as that dried, I moved on to a new project. If there was one time in the world that I was super, super grateful for being a small human being, it's right now. It was pretty late in the game that I decided to replace the faucet on the sink of the bathroom to match the rest of the fixtures. And this is a pretty straightforward process that I wish I was able to film, but it was way too tight in there because there is a shelf in this vanity. So I will link a video below this video in the description for you to watch in case you're interested in this process. But it's a pretty straightforward process. I shut the water off from underneath the sink and then removed the faucet and replaced it with a new one and added some new hookups as well. This is honestly one of the easiest upgrades that you can make in a rental and just like all of the rest of the fixtures I placed the old faucet in a box to keep for later to put back when we move out. Now while the water gadgets for the sink looked great, replacing the ones in the shower were not an option for our rental unit because we don't have access to the water shutoff for our particular apartment. So instead of stressing out about that, I actually decided to upgrade the shower head and I did this by unscrewing the old one. I then replaced the plumber's tape on the pipe and then screwed in the new shower head. And since I could not replace all of the fixtures in the shower, I added a matte black caddy to the shower head in order to tie in some of the decor from the rest of the room. At this point though, it was totally time to add some of those finishing touches. So I started by scrubbing the bathroom and making it look super squeaky clean. And then I added some personal touches like artwork and finally replaced that shower curtain rod as well. When living in a rental apartment, it's really easy to make simple changes without having to feel like you have to do a major renovation. And that is exactly what we did in this bathroom. And luckily, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am easily able to reverse all of these changes I made when we do move out so that we are able to get our security deposit back. 
And even though I didn't make any drastic changes, just making some small, simple changes like switching out some fixtures and adding some shelves really, really helps to make the space feel like our own and also makes it help to function in a way that works for us. I'm actually super stoked about this bathroom and I'm weirdly okay with the amount of time I spent in this bathroom over the past couple of weeks doing non-bathroom related things. And weirdly enough, I'm just excited about the fact that we have a bathroom that feels like it is part of our apartment and not just an additional room in our apartment. But whether you're a renter or an owner, I do hope that there were some tips in this video that helped you out in your own space. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, I do hope that you will subscribe to my channel and maybe give me a thumbs up and a comment. I'd really love that. But as always, thank you so much for the love and support. It is more appreciated than you know, and I cannot wait to continue to share some project ideas with you on my channel. But until then, friends, happy DIYing.